Welcome to the training for sponsors of camps participating in the Summer Food Service Program hosted by the Oregon Department of Education Child Nutrition Programs. This session is specifically for sponsors of residential summer camps and, or non-residential summer camps participating in the SFSP and which are not operating as an open or restricted open site. The objective of this training is to assist sponsors of CAPS in operating the SFSP successfully by identifying the specific information applicable to CAPS. During this training, we will present information on site eligibility, participant eligibility, meal service types, and record keeping. A camp is defined as a residential summer camp or non-residential day camp, which offer regularly scheduled food service as part of an organized program for enrolled children. In residential camps, participants spend the duration of the organized program in a 24-hour supervised care setting and receive regularly scheduled food service as part of the program. Sponsors of non-residential campsites must offer a continuous schedule of organized cultural or recreational programs for enrolled children between meal services. Sponsors of public or private nonprofit residential or non-residential camps may participate in the SFSP. Non-residential day camps may participate only as sites under eligible sponsoring organizations. SFSP sponsors are required to provide year-round service, but state agencies may grant exceptions to this requirement for sponsors of residential camps. Sites may not use area eligibility to establish site eligibility. Additionally, for-profit camps are not eligible to participate. Participant eligibility, camps are only reimbursed for enrolled children who meet free or reduced price eligibility standards. As previously mentioned, camps are reimbursed only for meals served to children who meet the free or reduced price income eligibility criteria. In order to determine income eligibility for participants, camp sponsors may use the confidential family application for free and reduced price meals or rely on lists of income eligible children provided by the school system. If camp sponsors use the confidential family application for free and reduced price meals, the application can be found on ODE CMP's SFSP's webpage at the link listed on this slide. Instead of individual income eligibility applications, camp sponsors may rely on lists of income eligible children provided by the school. Sponsors of camps are not required to submit the approved confidential family application for free and reduced price meals or school lists of eligible children to ODE CMP. They must maintain the list of or original approved forms for all eligible children in separate files for each camp session and the documents must be available for review by ODE CMP. SFSP sponsors of campsites must collect and report to ODE CMP income eligibility information in order to determine the eligibility of individual participants for free meals under the SFSP. The number of free and reduced price participants is reported in CMP web. Income information must be updated annually and may not be more than 12 months old. Confidential family application for free and reduced price meals are current and valid until the last day of the month in which the form was dated one year earlier. This means that a form signed and dated by a sponsor on June 1st of 2015 is considered valid until June 30th, 2016. Sponsors have the flexibility concerning the effective date of certification for program benefits. This flexibility applies only to the eligibility determinations made through the application process of complete applications containing all required information at the time of submission. The date used to make this determination is the date on which either the parent or guardian signs the form or the sponsor official signs the application to certify eligibility of the participant. Sponsors must decide which date they will rely on as the effective date and apply this date to all applications. If the date of a parent or guardian signature is not within the month of certification or the immediately preceding month, the effective date must be the date of the certification. Confidential family applications for free reduced price meals form is used to determine the income eligibility of enrolled children for all camps, residential and non-residential. The information collected on the application includes household size and income or the case number for benefits received under the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or SNAP formerly known as the Food Stamp Program, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, or TANF, or the Food Distribution Program on Indian Reservations, or FDPIR. Note that if one child in the household is receiving SNAP, FDPIR, or TANF benefits, all other children in the household are categorically eligible to participate in SFSP. If a sponsor requires a form in a foreign language, 
the translated applications for the National School Lunch Program, or NSLP, may be used to determine individual income eligibility in the SFSP. Translated forms for the NSLP are available online, located at the link on this slide. Campsites can only be reimbursed for meals served to children who are eligible for free reduced price meals according to the income guidelines for the National School Lunch Program or, and School Breakfast Program. With ODE CMP approval, camps may claim reimbursement for serving up to three meals or two meals and one snack to eligible children each day. Therefore, a campsite may not claim reimbursement for snacks on days that it claims reimbursement for breakfast, lunch, and supper. Alternately, a campsite may not claim reimbursement for a third meal on days that it claims a snack for reimbursement. As camp reimbursements are based on the number of meals or snacks served to children who are eligible for free or reduced price meals, sponsors of camps must maintain the documentation that demonstrates the free or reduced price eligibility of the children they claim reimbursement for and must make it available for review by the state agency. Camps may also charge non-income eligible children a separate fee for meals. Common meal service styles for camps are family style and cafeteria style meal service. Camps offer an ideal setting for implementing family style meals, provided that adults are available to assist children during the meal. Serving family style meals can help children develop good eating habits through the personal example provided by supervising adults. If a family style meal service is allowed by ODE CMP at a campsite, the sponsor must ensure that a sufficient amount of food is placed on each table to provide the required portion size for each of the food components for all children at the table and also program adults supervising the meal service. Children should initially be offered the full required portion of each food component. When a child does not initially accept the full required portion of a meal component, it is the responsibility of the supervising adults to encourage each child to accept the full required portion for each food component. For example, if a child initially refuses a food component or initially does not take the full required portion of a meal component, the supervising adult should offer the food component to the child again. The point of service meal count is taken when a complete reimbursable meal is on the table in serving dishes. For more information on serving family style meal service, please review the SFSP Nutrition Guidance Manual and the resources on family style meal service located on the resource slide at the end of this presentation. In cafeteria style, participants select food from a cafeteria line. Food is not available at the dining table. Cafeteria meal service operates as follows. Participants must select the minimum required amounts of all required components their first time through the cafeteria line. Adults must supervise the cafeteria line to ensure each participant selects at least the minimum required portions of all required food components. The point of service meal count must be taken when the participant has a complete reimbursable meal in hand and before or as they leave the cafeteria serving line. Offer versus serve, or OVS, is a concept that applies to menu planning and meal service, which allows children to decline some of the food offered in a reimbursable breakfast, lunch, or supper. OVS is not allowed for snacks. This type of meal service is used with cafeteria-style meal service. The goals of OVS are to simplify program administration and reduce food waste and costs while maintaining the nutritional integrity of the SFSP meal that is served. Pending waiver approval from the USDA, all SFSP sites, regardless of location or type of sponsorship, may utilize OVS. All non-school sponsors electing to use OVS and schools participating in SFSP and electing to follow the SFSP meal patterns are required to follow the SFSP OVS requirements as outlined on this slide and the next slide. Breakfast. The following four food items must be offered. One serving of fruit or vegetable, one serving of grains, and one serving of fluid milk, and one additional serving of fruit or vegetable, bread or bread alternate, or a serving of meat or meat alternate. Offering two servings of the same food item is not permissible under OVS and SFSP. All food items offered must be different from each other. For example, a breakfast menu that includes a serving of milk, a serving of fruit, and two servings of toast is not a reimbursable meal under OVS and SFSP because the toast is two of the same food item. A child must take at least three of any four of the food items offered. 
For lunch or supper, the following food components must be offered through at least five different food items. One serving of meat or meat alternate, two different servings of fruit and or vegetable from two different food items, one serving of grains, one serving of fluid milk. Lunch or supper OVS requirements differ from breakfast in that a child must take at least three food components rather than items listed above from the five food items offered. Three food components are required for an adequate nutritious meal for children. There are specific record keeping requirements for camps. The next slides discuss the specific requirements for meal count records and racial and ethnic data collection. Since camps may only claim meals served to children who are eligible for free reduced price meals, the meal count system must be an actual meal count. The actual meal count is when meals are reported by the child's name. The SFSP Administrative Guidance Manual includes a sample actual meal count record. The eligibility of the individual children is not identified on the meal count form. Instead, the person responsible for reconciling the meal counts have the eligibility information of each child and counts only the meals or snacks served to eligible children for reimbursement. For family-style meal service, the point-of-service meal count is conducted when the complete reimbursable meal is on the table in serving bowls for the campers to serve their meal. For cafeteria-style meal service, the point-of-service meal count is conducted at the end of the cafeteria line when a reimbursable meal has been selected. The meal count must be done by marking each camper's name if they select a reimbursable meal. A sample meal count record is located in the Sponsor's Administrative Guidance Manual. To conduct an actual point-of-service meal count, record all campers' names who are served a meal. The form must not identify campers' eligibility status. This means that the meal count record used by staff cannot show which campers are eligible for free or reduced price meals. Only staff involved in the meal count reconciliation and submitting the claim for reimbursement should know a camper's eligibility. Therefore, the actual meal count record must list all campers participating in the meal service. Complete the date of the meal service. At each meal or snack, mark the reimbursable meal for each camper at the point of service. At the end of each week, Submit the form to the staff assigned to reconcile the meal counts. This person will determine which camper's meals may be submitted for reimbursement. An easy way to document reimbursable meals is to highlight those meals that may be included on the meal claim. All sponsors are required to collect racial and ethnic data for all sites under the sponsor's jurisdiction. Sponsors of camps must collect and maintain the racial and ethnic category for each site separately for each session of the camp. Session means a specified period of time during which an enrolled group of children attend camp. The sponsor may use visual identification to determine a participant's racial and ethnic category. For collection purposes, a participant may be included in the group to which he or she appears to belong, identifies with, or is regarded as a member of by the community. A sample racial and ethnic data collection form is located in the reference materials section of the sponsor's administrative guidance manual. Camps that charge separately for meals also must provide a written policy on free meals that explains that the camp uses the USDA's eligibility standards for family size and income levels at the level of reduced price school meals. Describes how the camp accepts income eligibility forms from campers and assures that children whose families receive SNAP, FDPIR, or TANF benefits are automatically eligible for free meals. Describes how the camp will collect payment from children who must pay the full price for their meals and how the camp ensures that children receiving free meals are not overtly identified. Assures that the camp has a hearing procedure for families who want to appeal a denial of eligibility for free meals and assures that if a family requests a hearing, the child will continue to receive free meals until a decision is made by the hearing official. The resources listed on this slide have specific information related to camps. If you have any questions regarding the information presented here, please contact your assigned specialist. Thank you for participating in the ODE CMP SFSP training on requirements for camps. Thank you for all that you do to fuel Oregon's future.